let's start with the formal definition of a group isomorphism. So, an isomorphism, phi is the typical letter for it, from a group G to a group G prime is a one-to-one -one mapping from G onto G prime that preserves the group operation. And then specifically what that means is that phi of AB equals phi of A times phi of B for any A and B in the first group. Now, I pointed out several words if I read through that. First of all, this function has to be one-to-one -one and onto. We have to have a bijection from one group to the other, which means that the sets for G and G prime have to be the same size either the same cardinality if it's an infinite set, or the same finite number if it's a finite set. But what's really important is this operation here, this property that it preserves the group operation. It's important to think about this, that this one here, because A and B are in G, this is the group operation of G. But over here, after you've gone through the function, these elements are elements of G prime. So it's basically, if we do the operation before we apply the function in G, or if we do the operation after we apply the function in G prime, either way we get the same result. If we have those things, then we say that there's an isomorphism between these groups, we say that they're isomorphic, and we write G isomorphic to G prime. So, when you're showing that two groups are isomorphic, there's sort of four things you've got to do. First of all, you have to define what your function is, then show it's one-to-one, -one, show it's onto, and show it has this property. Let's do this. So, let's say that we're going to look at the group SL2R. And if you don't remember that notation, that's the set of 2 by 2 matrices with real values and determinant 1. And I'm going to define, first of all, a matrix M is just 2, 3, 1, 2, and my mapping phi is actually going to take that SL2R into itself, and we're going to define that thing by phi of the matrix A is equal to M inverse AM. So I've done the first step. I've defined what my function is. And then what I'm going to do is show that this thing has to be one-to-one. -one. For a function that wants to be one-to-one, -one, we assume that phi of one thing equals phi of another. So if phi of A equals phi of some matrix B, and then we show that A has to equal B. Well, what does this mean? M inverse AM would have to equal M inverse BM. If I multiply on the left by M, M times M inverse is the identity matrix, so I'm going to end up with just AM equals MB. If I multiply on the right by N inverse, or effectively use the right cancellation property, I get that A equals B. So that is, in fact, a one-to-one -one function. To show it's onto, I take any element of the codomain, so any matrix B, and I want to show that there's something that maps onto B. Well, I claim that, first of all, M, B, 
m inverse is in my group <coughs> because, first of all, the determinant of m is 1. That makes that m is in my group. That means that m inverse is in my group. And so this is really just a product of group elements. It has to be in the group. But then, phi of m b m inverse is m inverse m b m inverse m. And again, we're going to get an identity matrix here. We're going to get an identity matrix here. The whole thing's going to be b. There we go. For any b, we found something that maps to it. Therefore, it's one to one. Finally, we want to show that this thing has the property, which I'm going to give a name. I'm going to call it the homomorphism property. To show that this has the homomorphism property, I'm going to say, what if I have phi of a, B. Well, that's going to be equal to M inverse A, B, M. On the other hand, if I do phi of A times phi of B, I'm going to get M inverse A, M times M inverse B, M. Those middle ones are going to give me the identity, so I'm going to get M inverse ABM. Either way, I'm getting M inverse ABM, so these things must be equal. Therefore, it's one-to-one, -one, onto, has the homomorphism property, so this is an isomorphism. <laughs>